Yelan is finally out, and this is an honest look at how she works with different teams and characters at Constellation Zero with a free-to-play weapon. So here's exactly what you need to know about her in this showcase video. I think the best way to start this off is by taking a look at Yelan's personal damage potential. The build I'll be using here will be the same one I'll showcase in various team comps, and it's going to be a double two set of Heart of Death and Tenacity of Millilith, while her main free-to-play weapon is going to be Favonius Warbow. What's really special about Yelan is that all of her damage besides normal attacks scale with maximum health. Attack is completely useless for her, so I'm focusing on getting energy recharge with Favonius Warbow, and the rest of the stats are built around health, critical rate, and damage. Keep in mind, going for a 4 set of Emblem of Severed Fate is also really good on her, but sadly, I didn't get lucky with obtaining health on Emblem pieces, as ironic as that sounds. Now her first ability is a special charge shot called Breakthrough Barb. It can be charged up really fast, and you can obtain it after spending 5 seconds out of combat, or by chance reset it after hitting enemies with her skill. The damage is decent here, but don't expect to become the next Coco Goat missile launcher. On the other hand, her elemental skill is pretty amazing. This is her highest scaling talent with health, and I can easily cost 30 to 80,000 damage on each enemy I tag, depending if it gets vaporized. However, what's funny about it is that she can still get stuck when running around, and I thought maybe if you enter some sort of a shadow realm, you'd be immune to damage, but sadly, I got beaten up badly when trying to test this theory. Finally, her elemental skill is what you would expect from our female Xing Cho. It deals about the same amount of damage as with her breakthrough barb when it hits the enemies initially, and afterwards, every time anyone uses a normal attack or you hit an enemy with her skill, it releases coordinated attacks, each of them hitting for a decent amount of damage, but it builds up pretty fast, since you can potentially unleash 15 of these attacks or 45 hits in total. In fact, even if I use something like a recurve bow, a 3 star weapon, you can expect her to output around 200 to 300 thousand damage, if you take into account her skill and burst, which is pretty insane if you think about it. And just to offer some context, I also compared her signature weapon Aqua Simulacra against Favonius Warbow and recurve bow, and I was surprised to see that even at her lowest potential, potential, she's able to output so much damage, which can keep going higher and higher with more investments. Now, what's also really interesting about Yelan is that she has this passive talent, where after activating her burst, this talent will boost active character's damage every second it passes, for up to 50% in total, and it's a pretty cool buff. Since if you keep continue using her as the active character, this passive talent buff just keeps increasing her burst and or skill damage with every new tick. And what's even better, this buff remains on the next character you switch, so when you get near the end of the final buildup, you can switch to someone who can deal damage with a high multiplier to see some big numbers. But yeah, Yelan's personal damage potential is definitely high, and the reason why I chose Favonius Warbow is that first of all, her main source of damage is the burst, and she still needs lots of energy in order to activate it often. So while I could show you bigger numbers like here, the more realistic scenario is going to be when you can achieve the energy recharge she needs in order to act as a support damage dealer for her team. Now, it's time to see how good Yelan is in team showcases. And the beautiful thing about her is that she can be used in almost any team you want. But I personally wanted to show a couple of free-to-play team comps as well as some 5-star teams. So the first free-to-play team is good old Taser, but with Yelan instead of Xing Cho. As expected, it performs really well when using Fischl, Beto, and Sucrose, who acts as the so-called driver for the team, although it does come with a small sacrifice. Since Sucrose is the active character during Yelan's burst, the passive which keeps increasing damage becomes underutilized, because the majority of damage that Sucrose deals is from transformative reactions, which do not benefit from Yelan's damage boost. Still, this team absolutely shreds the Abyss, but keep in mind since unlike Xing Cho, Yelan doesn't provide damage reduction or small amounts of healing, so you might have a tougher time surviving, and in my case, I gave Prototype Amber to Sucrose just to get some healing for the team. Moving over, the next free-to-play variation was Freeze with Rosaria, Kaya, and yet again, Sucrose. This isn't the team that I enjoyed playing the most, but then again, I never really liked Freeze with Xing Cho as well. Although, I have to admit, Yelan's skill dash and charge shot came into play quite a few times, 
when I needed to freeze my enemies, which was kind of fun, but otherwise, I would say it's a fine team and Yelan does the job well to keep the enemies frozen when using her burst and delivering some serious damage at the same time. But where things get interesting is when you start involving Pyro teammates. Now, I won't get too much into details on how well you can vaporize off of our burst because I'm going to leave that for the guide video that's coming out shortly. And instead, all I can say is that her burst will allow Pyro damage dealers to vaporize their attacks. However, it's not completely consistent. A good example is national or international team. You won't see the same consistency as you would with Child, who can easily help Shangling vaporize most of her Pyronado hits, while with Xing Cho, he also applies a lot more Hydro if he has his final constellation unlocked. But even then, I found the team to be really strong, although I think this current Abyss cycle is really one of the worst to showcase Pyro characters and vaping. But that's just few of the free to play teams I've tested out with 4 star characters and weapons. All of them are pretty much what you would expect, and Yelan brings a ton of damage as a support. I mean, even with Favonius Warbow, I was easily able to get 80,000 vaporized crits, which is just icing on the cake when you consider how much damage she also supplies from her burst. Now, when it comes to other 5 star characters, obviously I had to try out Hu Tao and see how good they are together. There are two popular variations when using the Prankster Double Geo and Verdes and Venerir Shred or simply VB Shred. So with Double Geo, while initially you can vaporize Hu Tao's charge attacks, if the enemy is standing nearby the resonating Geo constructs, they will slowly chip away the Hydro Aura and few moments later, Hu Tao's prior application will overtake and she will no longer be able to vape her attacks. This is a bit of a bummer, but on the bright side, you can utilize Yelan's Hydro application in the VV Shred team. However, not a lot of people seem to talk about this, but pulling off these rotations isn't always that simple or easy. So while you can do it, it's not gonna be as comfortable as with Double Geo. Although, since you can't really vape all of Hu Tao's attacks, you're basically left with VV Shred. Or maybe not. You see, if you really want to keep Hu Tao alive with Zhang Li, who said you can't just put both Xing Chou and Yelan? into your team. In fact, this is probably my new favorite Hu Tao team comp, and what's even cooler, you can literally swap her out and put in someone like Diluc or Yoimiya and enjoy using your new and shiny team. Heck, you don't even have to use Zhang Li. Any flexible unit works, as long as you're getting some value out of them. Finally, the last meta team I want to talk about is Raiden National. It's no secret it dominates the Abyss, and with the Elan instead of Xing Cho, I didn't really feel like I'm gaining or missing anything. I'll probably do more back to back testing in a future video, but for now, now, all I can say is that it works really well. Maybe sometimes Yelan's Hydra application is not as fast as you would want it to be, and Shangling misses a vape with her Pyronado, but otherwise, I was able to clear the Abyss Chambers really fast. All in all, I would say that Yelan is extremely flexible in almost any team, and while all she does is provide damage as a support, it's a lot of damage she'll be getting from her. She'll help with reactions even if they aren't always consistent, and overall, she's a really powerful addition to any team you're going to build. So what do I think about this carry interrogator C0 potential? Well, it's pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, she is from Liyue, and characters from this region almost always end up really strong. The thing that I love most about her is that she's so damn easy to build, it's not even funny. Like, literally, you can even go for a recurve or slingshot boss, two solid 3-star options, because she doesn't care about attack, and all she needs is health, critical stats, and energy recharge. Or in other words, you'll be considering weapons, subsets, and passives that can help with this. And in addition, her artifact choices are also pretty flexible, since now all of those sands and circlets with health main stats suddenly become relevant, and getting a roll onto health substat is also something that I thought I would never say, but it's now exciting to see what it happens. And sure, there are also some drawbacks to her burst. It doesn't apply Hydro as consistently as it would with a C6 Ching Cho, and yes, I'm aware that her second constellation adds an additional coordinated attack, which will probably improve her Hydro application to some extent. However, I'll talk about this more in my future video, and for now, all I can say is that her damage is really high. She has lots of good free-to-play weapons to choose from, a lot of artifacts that you would consider junk have become her treasure, and overall, I think that anyone who wants a second Ching Cho will be happy to have her. Now the bad news are is that the banner she's on is 
pretty terrible. Obviously, this is only an opinion, and you might want to get these 4 stars, but come on. Barbara is a free unit that works fine at C0 with Thrilling Tales, while the other two are just niche options. I think this is going to be a hard pill to swallow if you want to get Yelan, but then again, maybe it's just me who thinks that way. Otherwise, I think that she's really strong at C0, and it's kind of funny to think about this, but there's probably a lot of people out there who still haven't built or tried Xingqiu. So imagine someone discovering a powerful support like Yelan. At Constellation Zero and using Favonius Warbow, you won't get disappointed with what she has to offer, and I'm sure we as a community will understand her even better after some time passes. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy the fact she can run around fast and tie up her enemies. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, keep an eye out for her guide video coming out soon, which you can do so by subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.